Want to know why? Ask how. Howard, the humongous. I'm sitting here in New York City, and we're in the midst of one of the most famous mayoral races in the country. I mean, remember, we have Anthony Weiner, who not only waved his dick around um, before the race and caused a major scandal, um, he also went on television and promised he would never do it again, and then did it again with six women. Um, I mean, this guy has made headlines. This should be an exciting race, for God's sakes. Well, my ballot, my absentee ballot arrived yesterday, and I want to be a good citizen. I want to vote for one of these dickheads, if you'll excuse the expression. Um, And I don't know anything about them. It is really hard to know about local candidates these days. I mean, once you get outside the White House and beyond Mitch McConnell, um, the press doesn't tell you anything about politicians. So I went online to study my politicians. I did a ghoul. Well, this should work, right? And it turned out there was a New York Times guide to the candidates. Well, I read this studiously and methodically. I dedicated myself to this. I put 45 boring minutes into this process. And at the end of 45 minutes, I couldn't remember anything about any of the candidates aside from the fact that Anthony Weiner uses his sexual organ in strange ways, and maybe not so strange, most of the people in this audience have probably done something of the sort at one time or another, let's confess, boys and girls. But, and the other thing that was highly memorable, there were two other things that were highly memorable. Christine O'Connell, I think her name is, she's a Mayor Bloomberg's favorite, talked about her wife, her wife, I mean, yes, I know we're all used to gay families these days, but it's still a little shocking when it comes up in a mayoral race. And there's an Asian candidate. Asian, I mean, just think of our stereotypes of Asian. This means the guy is dedicated and smart. And the New York Times says he's the hardest working campaigner of the entire crew. And guess what's most memorable about him? He goes to a Muslim mosque every Friday trying to win over New York City's Muslim community. I mean, haven't we been told that this is the world's leading Jewish city or something of the sort? I mean, I'm Jewish. I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are at least three others of us. At any rate, he's not going to a synagogue. Now, considering the fact that in the Muslim community, it is popular to preach genocidal messages about Jews, this doesn't make me comfortable with the Asian candidate. So what am I left with here? I'm left with a profound sense of boredom about the candidates and an inability to remember anything about them. What does that indicate? Well, they're all talking about education. They're all talking about middle-class housing. They're talking about sort of picking up the pieces of a falling culture. They're forgetting about something. New York City is one of the five most exciting cities in the world. In some people's opinion, it is the most exciting city in the world. New York City should be leading. New York City should be leading in technologies. New York City should be leading in next generation communications. New York City should be leading in education. New York City should be leading in public transportation. New York City should be be beyond the cutting edge of exciting in everything it does. And these people, instead of concentrating on making more exciting elephants, doing more exciting things at the parade, are all busy picking up the elephant shit. Is that what politicians are about? Picking up after our past? Or are they about seeing a future and taking us into it, guiding us into it with excitement, getting us to something, to see something around the corner that does not yet exist and motivating us to achieve it? Not a single candidate is guiding us in to an exciting, exhilarating, amazing future. And that's true of most American politics today. Too many people are picking up the elephant shit when they should be imagining entirely new forms of elephants, or if you're a Democrat like me, donkeys.
Okay, here's an appendix to our episodes on why mayoral candidates in New York City this month are the dorkiest people on planet Earth. I was walking through a street festival on 7th Avenue, right up the block from my house one day. I'd just come back from one of three trips to L.A. On my trip to L.A., I had been with a friend who had been working with a candidate who could never make it as mayor in L.A. Absolutely never make it as mayor. He'd been an advisor to this guy. And guess what? The candidate won. And my friend was explaining to me about how he wanted to make New York the leading, or he wanted to make L.A. the leading city of the world in a bunch of categories. And I said, wait a minute. Don't you just do that on your own. Let me get New York into this competition. Let me get New York to race with you to see who can be number one in three basic categories. You tell me you've got your mayor on board for this. I'll go to my mayor and get him on board to get into this race. Makes sense, right? So I ran into Sal Albanese, who is running for mayor and wanted to hand me his card and shake my hand and have a brief conversation. And all, I mean, he would have kissed my baby if I'd had a baby. I didn't have one. The poor man was bereft, unable to kiss anything. Um, Thank God. Um, And I said, Sal, I just ran into this guy, a friend, who's consulting with the mayor of LA. And I proposed this idea. And why don't we do this together? Unfortunately, even having gotten that far, and I could probably get Sal Albanese on the phone if I tried, Sal Albanese, in a debate I watched this morning between the mayoral candidates, Sal's a nice guy, I can tell you that from having met him. At least he pretends to be a nice guy very effectively. Um, And yet, Sal was the most boring of the candidates on stage. He couldn't hold anybody's attention for more than a second and a half. Um... Calling Sal would be a waste of time. Sal's not going to, unfortunately, win this election, and he's probably sweet as can be. If New York, if one of these dumb mayoral candidates, these people who are boring on a plate, um, these people, a flounder is more interesting. Believe me, if only one of them got into racing with L.A. to be the world's leading techno city, with the greatest Wi-Fi connections in the world and a few other hotshot items like that that you could get Google and its founders to get along with in a second and a half. Hey, we'd have a mayoral race. Wow, this would be politics. We'd have somebody to vote for. But no, our candidates want to compete with sleeping pills. And here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. We have a presidential race coming up in roughly two years. Are we going to have candidates who look into the future and see what America could be two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Are we going to have candidates who get us excited about leading the world in directions the world has never seen before? Or are we going to have Samanex? on a stick.